Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel once again, making life easy. Kindly subscribe to our channel, like and share, and also leave your suggestions and comment at the comment session. Welcome once again to our series on basic mechanics. In our previous videos, we look at resultant of two forces. In this current video, we are looking at resultant of three concurrent forces, part one. So quickly, let's solve our first example. This is our first example. We are asked to determine the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force in this diagram. So quickly, let's look at how we can be able to solve this example. Solution to example one. We are asked to find the resultant of these forces acting on the object below. So as you can see from the diagram, we have four forces, force F1, force F2, force F3, and force F4. So we had already stated from our classes that anytime you have three or more concurrent forces, acting on an object, the only possible solution is to use the method of summing components. We cannot use the triangle rule, but we can only use the method of summing up components. So quickly, let's look at how to go about this question. So anytime you are giving three or more concurrent forces acting on an object, and don't forget that you are going to solve the problem using the method of summing up components. So here we are going to get the components of all the forces here. So let's start with the first force, which is F1. So for, for F1. But in this case, you can see that the F1 is lying exactly on the y-axis. So take note that anytime the force is acting on one of the axes, then we are not going to get the components, the other component. So in this case, the force is lying on the Y axis. And so we are not going to get any component for our X. In the same way, if the force was lying on the X axis, then we were not going to get any component for our Y. I don't forget that our unit vectors will be moving this direction. So when we are moving this direction, it's positive. When we are going this direction, it's negative. Up is positive, and then down is negative. Take note of this. So now, our force, because it's lying on the, exactly on the Y axis. So we said that we are only going to get a component for the Y. And you can see that the force is pointing upwards. So it means that our force is in the same direction with this side. It's moving upwards, so it's going to be positive. So it means that for F1, we are only going to get one component. So F Y1 will be equal to 500 Newtons, 500 Newtons. We are done with force F1. Now let's look at force F2. So for F2, now for F2, we can see that the force is making an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. It is making an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. So what you are going to do is that we are going to move from where, this time you are giving the force, you are going to move from where the force was applied to the end part here. We are going to move from where the force was applied to the ending or where the arrow is on the force. So it means that if you want to move from this point to that point, then we are going to move this direction on the x axis. 
And then we are also going to move this direction on our Y axis. So now you can see that our X, we are going this direction, which is at the negative side of our unit vectors. And then on the Y, we are moving up. So at first of all, let's consider the angle. This is our angle here. So you can see that our angle is 35, but this angle is adjacent to our side here, which is f of 2x. The angle is adjacent to our f of x for force 2. And it is the angle is opposite to this side, f of y2. So it means that if you want to get f of x, then we are going to use cos because the angle is adjacent to this side. If you want to get Fy, we are going to use sine because the angle is opposite to the side. So for that matter, we can say that our F of X for force two will be equal to the magnitude of our force, which is 320 Newtons cos the angle, and the angle there is 35. And from here, our answer will be equal to one eight three point five newtons newtons we can also get our f y of s2 and in that case you said that but now look at our f of s2 look at our f of s2 our f of s2 is moving this direction it is moving in this direction it is moving in this direction and it is against the direction of our unit vector. Don't forget that we said that anytime we are moving at this session, it's going to be negative. So it means that our F2 of X is going to be negative. It's going to be negative. So this answer will be negative as well. So our answer will be negative 183.5. But our Y is moving up. We'll be moving up in the Y direction. So it means that for our y is going to be positive, and we have established the fact that this angle will be facing this side, and for that matter, that will be sine. Therefore, our f2y is going to be 320 sine the angle, which is 35, and from there we are going to get. 183.5. Sorry, the one for the x, the 320 cos 35 is supposed to be, it's not supposed to be 183.5, but it's supposed to be negative 226.3. Supposed to negative 226.3. You can do that calculation and confirm. So we are done with our force F2. Now we go to our force F3. We go to force F3. For force F3, we have not been given this angle. We were not given the angle here. But we have been given that the distance, when you look at this force here, we have been given that the distance on the X axis is three and the distance on the Y axis is four. Therefore, we can see that the distance from this point to that point is three, and the distance, the distance on the horizontal axis is three, and the distance on the vertical here is four. So if we have this side and then we have this side, then it means that we can determine the length from this point to that point, which will be our hypotenuse, which will be our hypotenuse. So for F3, for F3, first of all, we need to calculate our hypotenuse. And our hypotenuse for our F3 here is going to be known that the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is always equal to the square root of the other two sides. So we are going to get three square plus four square. And from there, our hypotenuse is going to be five, is going to be five. Once you have gotten our hypotenuse, if this angle is theta, then we can say that we have seen that our hypotenuse is equal to five. If this angle is theta, we can see that the horizontal side is adjacent to the angle 
and the vertical side is opposite to the angle. So from there, we can see that cos theta from that diagram, cos theta will be equal to three over five, which will be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then our sine theta will be equal to our opposite, which is four over our hypotenuse, which is five. So from here, we can get the S component and the Y component of our force. Therefore, our F X3, which is the S component for force F3 will be equal to 620 cos because the horizontal component is adjacent to the angle, so cos theta. But we have already established the fact that cos theta is three over five. Therefore, we have 620 times three over five. And from there, our F of X is going to be 372, 372.0 newtons. We can also get for our F of Y. So our F Y for force three will be equal to 620. This side is adjacent. This side is opposite. This side, which we are looking for, which will be our Y. For the force three, this side is opposite our angle. Therefore, we are going to use sine. From there, 620 sine theta. And our sine theta has been established as 620 times 4 over 5. 4 over 5 from the diagram. And so we can say that our FY3 will be equal to 4 nine, six, new tens. We are left with our last force, so four, four, step four, 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 step four. Don't forget that you have stated that for, therefore we are going to move from where the force has been applied, the origin of the force, which is at this point, to where the arrow is pointing. So if we want to move from this point to this point, we are going to move this way, and then you're also going to move that way. So you can see that now our Y is pointing downwards. And it is, we said that when we are coming down, it's negative because our Y is pointing downwards. Our Y component is going to be negative. Our X is moving the same direction on the positive axis. So that side is going to be positive. But now look at where our angle is. This is where our angle is. And this angle, you can see that it is the angle that is facing the, the x axis. The angle that is facing the x axis. So this is our x, f4, fx4. And this is f, y4. We can see that the x component of the force is facing the angle. And if it's facing the angle, it's going to be sine. So for force f4, we can see that our horizontal component, which is FS4, will be equal to the magnitude, which is 420, sine of the angle, which in this case we are giving at 20. And from there, our FS4 is going to be 143.6 newtons. Don't forget that you have established the fact that to be moving this direction, to be moving this direction, so it's going to be positive. And then our F Y4 will be equal to, now the Y side, this Y side is adjacent to the angle, it's adjacent to an angle. So we said that it's going to be cos. But we are coming down, we are moving down. And we have established the fact that if we are moving down, then it's going to be negative. Therefore, our answer is going to be negative 420 sine 20. And from there, we can see that our F4 will be equal to negative 394.7 newtons. At this point, we have been able to resolve all our forces into components. So it's a matter of summing all of them. So we can see that our resultant force will be equal to the sum of all the S components plus the sum of all the Y components. So for let's find the sum of the S components. The sum of the S components, which is Rx, will now be equal to 
all the x component. For the first force, you have zero for x, and then the second force, you have negative two, two six point three, and then we have the third one, which is three seven two for the third force, and the last force we have one four three point six. From here, our Rx will be equal to two eight nine point three newtons we can do the same for our ry so our ry will be all the sum of all the vertical components the vertical components the f of y so the vertical components for f of one we have 500 for f1 we have 500 for f2 we have 183.5 for f4 for F3, we have 496. And for the last force, we have negative 394.7. So from here, we can see that our RY will be equal to 784.8. Once you have been able to find the sum of the horizontal components and the sum of the vertical components, now, what we do is that we are going to draw a nice diagram to represent our Rx and our Ry. We are going to draw a nice diagram to represent our Rx. Allow me to clean this side. We are going to draw a nice diagram to represent our horizontal component and also our vertical component. From there, so from that side, from that side, we can draw a diagram. We know that our x is positive, so it will move this direction. And our sum of y is also positive, so it will move this direction. And our resultant force will move this way, to move this way. And the angle here is theta. And we know that our y is 784.8, and that of x is one four three. Our x is rather two eight nine point three. So from here we can find our resultant r. If our resultant r will be equal to the square root of two eight nine point three square plus the vertical, the sum of the vertical component square, which is seven eight four point eight square. And from here, our resultant force will be equal to 836.4 newtons. Now, we don't forget that we said that the force has both magnitude and direction. Therefore, we are left with our direction. And from here, we can see that tan theta is equal to opposite over the adjacent. So we can see that our tan theta will be equal to 784.8 over. 289.3. And from there, our theta will be equal to the tan inverse of whatever is there, which is 784.8 over 289.3. And from here, our theta will be equal to 69.8. So our resultant force will be 836.4 newtons, 69.8 degrees. So we are done solving the problem. That was pretty simple. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video. Once again, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell as well. So that whenever we post a video, you'll be able to get in touch with us. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.